Welcome everyone to the new Fly Fisher. I'm your host Bill Spicer. On today's show, we'll be fly fishing in Ontario's beautiful north country near the town of Kenora on Lake of the Woods. Our targeted fish are smallmouth bass, muskie, pike, and walleye. We'll be using a number of different setups to target each of these fish. So get your notebooks ready. This is going to be a very technical show. So stay with us. We'll be right back. Fly Fisher has been made possible thanks to Algoma Kinawabi Travel Association, Ontario Tourism, Islander Precision Reels, and Orvis Sporting Traditions. On today's show, we're in Ontario's beautiful North Country visiting Crow Rock Lodge on Lake of the Woods. Our guides for today are Crow Rock Brothers, Wendell Dafsik, Kurt Dafsik, and Chris Dafsik. Lake of the Woods is a lake occupying parts of Ontario and Manitoba and the U.S. state of Minnesota. Lake of the Woods is over 70 miles long and wide and contains more than 14,000 islands and 65,000 miles of shoreline. The lake's islands provide nesting habitat for a large number of American white pelicans and several hundred pairs of bald eagles. I think on, uh, on Lake of the Woods you'll find a, a, a great variety of, of uh, different species. You can target different fish every day and not run out of water, not run out of species of fish. You got your muskies, you have your, your, your walleye, you have your northern pike, smallmouth bass, lake trout. Not only that, but you could fish sometimes three, four, five different patterns in one day for the same species on different parts of the lake. The beauty of Lake of the Woods is you have different water quality. You have some areas are more stained than others. Some are a lot more clearer than others. You have, you have everything right here. There, there's no reason to look anywhere else. Smallmouth bass are first on the agenda. Wendell had stated the conditions were just right for non-stop topwater popper action. After a boat ride and a short portage into one of the many private lakes, the action started and Wendell was true to his word. There he is. Got him. Oh, oh yeah. Nice yeah. Little jump. yeah. Great. Well, that's great when they do the acrobatics. Yeah. Now, I, the popper I had started using was a little too big and they were missing it. Yeah. They'd strike at it and they couldn't take it in their mouth. So mm -hmm. I, I, went, I reduced the popper size and this seems to be doing the trick. Yeah, it seemed just about the right size. Yep. Yeah, they're probably not eating real big offerings yet, so. There we go. I know not a monster, Beautiful. but uh, he gets a A for all the acrobatics. <laughs> okay. Very good. There you go. Thank you. Now, not huge, but a lot of fun, and you can see he bent the rod pretty good. And, and away he goes. <laughs> there, he goes. there he goes. All right, good job. Well, that though. was excellent. That was excellent. Good job. Any kind of structure, that's what you shoot for. These fish are ambush type of, of fish. They need the protection from predators on them, themselves, the pike, the eagles, whatever. So any kind of structure you think they can hide in, that's where they'll be. Well, we have a wonderful smallmouth bass fishery uh, here. Um, uh, in addition to Lake of the Woods, uh, most of our remote lakes are uh, chock full of smallmouth bass. And uh, 
early early spring uh, they're off rocky points kind of grouped up waiting to go into spawn and then uh, there was a few weeks of uh, spawning period you know when, when they're up along the uh, shallows and stuff and then they too will get into their summer haunts uh, when it's real warm they may be uh, in the weeds and uh, you can catch them top water and uh, and and also up along reefs and and uh, and uh, structure like that Boy, that that popper pushes a lot of water. Yeah, that's that's what you want. It, uh, you want to make some noise. It kind of you want to make noise, right? Yeah, it gets their attention, and uh, you know, even if they're not real hungry, they become curious, and a lot of times they'll just hit out of curiosity, and sometimes out of anger. Yeah, that too. Yeah, you've yeah. upset them. You're, you know, right? They're get going, away from me. Yeah, what's that in my territory? Yeah. There he is. There we go. Yes, sir. Any kind of stroke. Oh, yes. And he's a yumper. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Good. Nice. Very nice. Oh, yes. Isn't that something? Yeah, he was right alongside that. Right where uh, he should have been. That big rock. And yeah. this is actually, this rock has got crevices in it, so it's even more perfect. you got lots of places to hide. Oh, yeah. It's nice when it works. Yeah, yeah. Nice when it works. My goodness, this guy's really giving me a tussle. Topwater fishing, that's mainly what gets people into fly fishing yeah. is the, the sight fishing on top like right. that, yeah. excitement. Yep, all the visual, visualization. The visualization, yeah. Yeah, a lot of people would rather catch one on top than uh, three underwater. That's for sure, yeah. 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 Okay. There we go. There we are. All right. Thank you. Yeah. And I'll get, I'll get you to hold them up that sure. bit this time and okay. hold them for the camera for, so we can see it. Beautiful. Yeah. Nice smallmouth, good little scrapper. All right, we'll get him back in the water there. Beautiful. Conditions were absolutely perfect to use surface popping flies. These flies were used in various colors and made from foam and balsa wood. It's important that you let the fly sit on the surface of the water for a moment before imparting action. Use short jerks on the line as you retrieve the fly. The concave nose of the fly will cause a popping noise along with a disturbance of the surface of the water, thus attracting the fish. That was kind of like a, uh, a real easy going take. He yeah. just come up and sucked that down. Yeah. Yeah, you got to be fish a, right beside him. Oh, I know they're following him. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you got to be attentive because sometimes it's not a yeah, big there splash. Yeah, right beside him. Right beside yeah, him. No, chasing him. Yeah, yeah chasing him, trying huh. to get the food out of his mouth. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's looking for a free meal. Yeah, look at that. See if I can bring yeah. him up near the top. Yeah, another another bass right beside him there. <laughs> yeah. yeah. This is a decent fish too. Yeah, I bet. I bet. Nice fish, nice fish, nice fat one. That is long and fat. Actually, that's a good fish. We're getting, we're getting close. Yeah, we're getting close to the trophy. Yeah, we're, we're, look, look at the, the the lines in this one though, compared to the smaller ones that we got. How really fish. marked up this one is nicely. Yeah, they're pretty. Got those nice vermicular lines. Yeah. Good, job, good job, good job. Yeah. Now this is why he's brought us to this area. If you look down on the water here, we got all these boulders, and that's what attracted that fish. I put the, the fly over top and it came up from the boulders. This is what you got to look for when, you, when you're searching a lake and trying to find smallmouth waters. A yeah, good, good spot for crayfish to hide and yeah. uh, you know minnows to uh, and inhabit the area and uh, they, they could kind of ambush these uh, critters as well so good, uh, good area to be fishing. The setup that we're using today for bass is a floating line to a nine foot tapered leader and then the fly. The next setup is for muskie and walleye and it's a floating line to a type three sinking leader with a three foot section of 12 pound fluorocarbon and attached to that 18 inches of 80 pound test fluorocarbon bite tippet and then the streamer. 
The third setup is a clear intermediate sinking line with three feet of 12 pound fluorocarbon leader and attach to that 18 inches of 80 pound test fluorocarbon bite tippet and to that the streamer. Keeping you out a bit because we got these nice boulders coming out. There we oh. go. I heard that. I didn't even see it. I just heard it and struck. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, yes. Yeah, nice jump. Let's pull us out a little bit here. Good suggestion, switching to black. Yeah. Let's see Must be the contrast with the, the perk, light sky. Perk them up a little bit. That, we're getting close to the, the one we want. We're getting close to the one we want. Very nice. Yeah. Good fish. Okay. Well, he ate that down. Okay, we got lucky on that one. And, uh, not too bad. When coming to Lake of the Woods and Crow Rock Lodge, you need to cover all bases as far as rods are concerned. First off, I got a nine foot three, number six weight rod that I use for throwing poppers for the bass. Um, it's a nice, nice weight. Uh, the bass aren't really huge here, but there's plenty of them and this will give you all the action you want. Then we went on to walleye, which I got a pretty good size walleye and I needed a number nine foot, number eight rod. A little stiffer, bigger fish, deep water, something that you can handle the uh, intermediate sinking lines and throwing clousers. The third is a 10 weight. Now the muskie here are big, they're strong and they're brutal along with some huge pike. I've got a nine foot three number 10 weight rod and it's meant for throwing heavy sink tips, big flies. Now a good selection for this would be a Mystic Rod. Their Tremor uh, series, Saltwater series is perfect for musky and big pike. So there it is in a nutshell what you need to bring. Uh, yeah, the uh, uh, my folks had purchased the uh, the lodge here in 1959. Uh, there was two owners previously to that, uh, so we're uh, we celebrated our 50th anniversary last year. So we've been we've been here for over 50 years, uh, looking after guests and um, you know, taking care of people. Uh, yeah, the food. Uh, well, coming from a big family of eight, uh, my mother and father father always prepared a, a, you know good meals and they kind of incorporated that into the business. They always wanted to make sure you were fed properly uh, uh, with, with a good meal, and, and uh, you'd, if you had a bad day on the lake, at least you're know, coming back to, to a fine meal and, and good accommodations. The nice thing about Crow Rock Lodge is one day you can be in small lakes catching bass, the next day you can go musky fishing, and then on another day, so taking a long distance run across the Lake of the Woods for walleye and have completely different water and different species of fish. This is fantastic. The next day I joined Chris Dafsik to try my luck at Muskie on the Fly. Lake of the Woods has a very healthy population of muskie and Chris was confident the fish were active and that I stood a good chance of taking one and possibly two fish. The flies that were used for muskie and walleye were deceivers in red and white and chartreuse, perch minnows, blue and white clousers, and a tube fly called the quarter chicken dinner. OK, 
Okay, the technique that I'm using is about a one and a half foot pull on the, on, on the strip. I'm placing the line under my finger and I'm, and I'm giving a good jerk, about a foot, foot and a half, just like that. And what it's doing is pulsating the fly. Pull stop, pull stop, pull stop. And this type of fly, it actually, when you do that, it moves side to side. So there's what you need to do. That's the, basically the technique. I'm not, I'm not moving the tip to try to do any extra with it. Just that sudden pull, like so, under the fingers, get it through, and then pull, 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 pull. The muskie is a very effective predator, living primarily on the flesh of other fish, but is not adverse to eating the occasional frog or small amphibian or even its own species. Completely motionless and quite invisible in its normal habitat, it lies wait beneath a water plant or alongside a submerged tree stump for a likely meal to stumble into the area. Oh, right, right there. Right there. Got him. Good one. Let him run. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. The old figure eight. Yeah. They get beside the boat, you got to entice them. Oh, yeah. Not a big one. But good fighter. Good fighters. Oh yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Beautiful, beautiful. Now I got my drag set just tight enough for him to pull it out if he needs to, but to give him resistance to tire him out. You don't want it so tight that you're gonna break your line. Bill, try to work them on the my side, Aaron. Onto your side, okay. Yeah, I got all the tools always on this okay. side. Okay. Got a boat of swing there. And what I've got on is a muskie. Get him up to the top. Yeah, he is a muskie. I'll put the net on that guy because they're real slippery. Yep. To to Chris. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. There. All right. All right. There. Now. Beauty. This is a him, eh? Yeah, male. Any reason, any way you can tell other than, yeah. other than his size? Yeah, just short and stocky the males are. Careful. Yep. All right. Look at that, folks. Musky on the fly. They say that it's not possible, but yes, it is. Now, I want to get this guy back in the water fairly quick. Revive him, because muskie, they look ferocious, but they're really quite uh, fragile. And if you keep them out of the water too long, they will die. Yeah, the water's cool, he'll go. Here we go. Good job. Oh, you know your stuff. What type of structure are we looking for for walleye in, in particular? Well, you look for these uh, drop-offs here like this. You can see the shoreline, it drops off. We've got a nice sharp drop to it and flattens back out. And then also we got a nice ledge coming off this point up here that we're, uh, runs 12, 14, 15 feet, runs out a little ways. They just basically a feeding station for them. Fish on. Oh yeah. 
Yeah. Feels good too. Kurt told me to add a little action to it. We we're going over top of this hump, so I made like just like a jig. And all of a sudden he hit. This, yeah, feels good. Feels really good. Hopefully it's a walleye and not a plate. Because <laughs> they do hit the same fly. And it looks like a walleye. And it's a decent walleye, isn't it? Nice one. Yeah. Oh yeah. Wowee. Woohoo! Look at this walleye. Look at the walleye. Oh my there goodness. You go. There you go, Isn't that something? <laughs> roll them that way for you. Yeah, roll them that way. I should pop out. So you can take them on flies. There we go. Now that's what it's all about. Walleye on the fly. You get to turn around here. Wow. And quality fish. Just a quality fish. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Now let's see if we can get them back in. Good fish, good fish. And away he goes. <laughs> good job, Bill. Thank you, sir. Very nice. Thank you, sir. The instruction, giving a little action to the, to the fly as I'm bringing it back in, just a little, almost a jigging like you would uh, when they jig for these fish and uh, it, made the, it made the difference. I had nothing for a half hour or so, not a touch. Then I started jigging it and bam, bam. So it wasn't five minutes that I was doing the jigging motion, so. The fishing continued to be excellent for the rest of the day, but unfortunately, we've run out of time for now. For more information on today's show and others in our informative series, visit us on the web at thenewflyfisher.com. From all of us here at The New Fly Fisher, thanks for joining us. Tight lines, and we'll see you next time. The New Fly Fisher has been made possible thanks to Algoma Kinawabi Travel Association, Ontario Tourism, Islander Precision Reels, and Orvis Sporting Traditions.